everyone, D Barnes here. Um, thank you for joining me this week for another exciting edition of Wild Card. Uh, oh, I wonder what we're going to be doing this week. Anyway, I won't delay a lot longer. Um, it's going to be a clay project, so your extras this week will be some water. <clears throat> Just any old water will do. Well, not old. It doesn't have to be hot or cold, it doesn't matter what it's in, but because we're using clay and it tends to dry out a bit, you might want some extra water. So uh, while I'm turning the camera around, you pop off and get some. And we'll open up the box, which you should have had delivered to your halls of residence, and um, we will see what's inside it. Okay. Okay. Here's my box. I've got my water on the side. Um, let's open her up and see what we've got. It's a lovely simple one this week. So I have some clay. Ooh, somewhere in there is it? Ah, little cocktail stick and some lollipop sticks. We'll get rid of the box. We don't need that this week. Um, I've just put some old bits of uh, paper on the table because it gets a bit dusty with the clay so um, you'll have an assortment of sticks to work with um, so now then what I wanted to show you was we're going to try and make some shells today so these are some shells that I got I picked up off a beach recently um, when I was on holiday and I thought oh it'd be so nice if we could make something similar. Um, so that's what we're after today. Now at this point you can choose, here's another one which is much thinner, white. So at this point you can choose if you want to make a number of shells or if you want to make two or one or whatever, that's entirely up to you. And I know that some of you won't do shells at all. You'll do just something that you fancy doing, which is absolutely fine. Um, so I'm going to leave those two in front of me so I can have a look. Now, if you do happen to have any shells or kicking about your room, you'll be able to copy those. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to get my clay out. I think I'm going to tear it in half like that okay so I've got my clay um, I'm going to start by pushing it now I'm going to make a giant version of these I'm going to make a, a mega shell mega shell and I'm going to start pushing my thumbs into the shape and I'm going to start, if you can see, I'm kind of going to curve it. Now there's a big split there. That's fine. I'm just going to push that clay over that split. Just push it in. Don't worry too much about that. And I can already see a kind of shell shape appearing. If you have a look at this, you can kind of look at the, the top part of the shell here. And it tucks under there. So I'm going to have that bit up there. I'm going to leave a bit more clay up at the top. And I'm going to start. Now, um, you know those other sh shells that are like a fan, that they're like, um, well, they're an oyster shell, aren't they? And their lines go like this. So we could do that on the back instead. These, these shells, the lines go round and round. It's up to you which way you want to do it. I mean, that is really pretty. Um, I think I'll wait and see. I'll make the body of the shell first. So I want to squash it out. As I said, I'm going to leave that bit alone and I'm going to squash the rest of the clay out. And I'm making like a little sort of bowl shape. So 
um, just take your time with this don't rush it too much if you get kind of like a, a fat bit next to a thin bit you can just push the clay around with your fingers like this and I might put a bit of tiny bit of water this is all I'm doing I just dab my fingertips in the water hardly any water you don't need a lot you don't want to saturate the whole thing but just add a little bit of moisture um, because the heat from your hands will and your room will dry the clay out and if you're doing this outside the air and the wind from the air will also dry it out so um, what I might do is I've got this big piece here I'm going to just take that off I might add that up there oops excuse that background noise it's my computer singing to me it never normally does that it only does that when I'm filming <laughs> oh right See, you're already getting a lovely dish. I mean, you can't put food in these because of the type of clay it is. But you can put little things in, you know, your keys, bits of jewellery if you wear jewellery. Um, also, I haven't put any paint in this week. Um, but if you have any paint left over from previous classes or you've got some anyway in your stash of creative goodies... Of course, you can paint it once it's dry after a day or two. Um, so it's quite a heavy piece, this. I'm going to taper. Uh, what I mean by taper is I'm just going to squeeze the edges a little bit so that they're a bit thinner. And I'm going to just tidy those up. by running my finger around them because if we have a look at the shell obviously they're quite fine on the edges around there like so And then I'm going to work on this bit now. Um, let's have a look at my shell. So it kind of comes to a point. So I'm going to push the clay around and I'm going to kind of just pinch it. So if you look at my hands, I'm going to put my finger here and I'm going to push the clay around it slightly like that to give it that Let's just break that bit of seaweed off to give it that shape. See, I'm pushing the, the clay around it. So if I get this and I push the clay and then I'm going to just flatten it so it's, it's soft and curved. Then I'm going to pull it over. Like there's now the great thing about shells is they're kind of gnarly. They're not, well, these ones I've got, they're gnarly. They're not kind of perfectly, it's oft, often they are really smooth. Like this one is a beauty. It's very, very fine and smooth, really thin. And of course you can see the light through it. Very subtle colour on it really pretty I mean if you have any white acrylic paint you could paint them white and if you want it more bowl shaped you could just cup it in your hand like this and press down into the palm of your hand cradle the clay in your hand and that shapes it into a bowl shape
and I just want to get this and have a look at it. So there's some interesting things. So I'm going to get my, I'm going to get this. I'm going to stick my uh, lollipop stick in. Let's see if I can get some of these interesting shapes going on. Um, dab of water. I'm just going to use the edge of the lollipop stick. I'm going to push the lollipop stick in a bit because I want it to go under and there a little bit more. So it's more curved like that. Um, you could also just do that with your finger. You put a dab of water on your finger. So we're pushing it out, and if I turn it round, we want that shape to be a bit more accentuated. I'm going to use the water to smooth it before I add some texture to the outside. Let's pull that over, that's a bit more of a... That's better. Now you can either just do that with your hands and I hardly use any water at all. But you're kind of compressing the clay. There's one tiny fingertip of clay in there. So I'm going to come back to this shape now. I want to pull a little bit over. I mean, you can do whatever you like at this point to this bit. You don't have to make these marks if you don't want to. Let's have a look. So we've got some bits coming here, a mark here. A bit of a mark there. You can just make these marks up. It just gives it a little bit more, look, makes it look a bit more real, I suppose. And just to, um, I'm going to dip my stick in the water. Because I don't want those square edges, I want round edges. It looks like it's been worn away by the sea. Um, get some water in there. can make some little, look I've just noticed this bit here on my shell, it's not completely round, it's got a funny little thing, I might just do a line in there, I'm going to follow that round, so if I were to paint it, I might paint that bit a slightly different colour. And then I'm going to turn it over and let's just have a look at the back. So now I think with this one, I am going to copy this shell shape. So I think I'm going to get my um, cocktail stick 
I'm going to start right at the top and I'm going to do lots and lots of lines like this, not too deep in. We'll have a steady-ish hand for this. You can always go back over these. Let's see the best way to hold it. I think I might hold it like this. And what we want is, we want them to curve. We don't want just straight lines going around. So I'm going to just kind of like start curving them slightly. one in between that one so where I've made the lines thicker I'm going to put one in between okay and then I'm just going to gently, by holding those, that shape, it just squashes it, makes it look a little bit more natural. water Can you use that bigger one if you want to just smooth it? It doesn't really smooth it. No, I think fingers are better. Okay, so there's my shell number one. See what it sits like. I want it to sit sort of straight, so I'm just going to press it down a bit. There. I mean, if you were to get some varnish, um, you can buy varnish in art shops online, Amazon, anywhere like that. Um, 
you could paint it, then varnish it, and then you could possibly put things like soap or something in it, or even just a nightlight candle would be pretty. But varnish would make it a bit more waterproof. So that's that one. I'm just going to do one more. I'm going to do a smaller one just to show you how to do the shape. I'm going to get some more clay. I'm just going to use a small piece of clay. Again, I'm going to turn it into um, more of a fan shape like this. I'm going to leave that so it's kind of like a sort of triangle shape. You can see where I'm going with this. This is the top of the shell. And I want it to be very thin. Um, you could make lots of tiny little shells and put them in the base of that if you wanted to, you know. So I want to make that bit's going to be round. So I'm just pinching it between my fingers and this bit is straight. It's a bit like one of those wafers you get for ice creams that's fan-tailed, I think they call them, a fan-tail wafer. Anyway, I've seen lots of very pretty shells that are like this. And then this bit I'm going to pinch like this. Don't worry, we're going to... It could be even thinner. See, that small bit of clay, I've got, you know, it's turned out quite big, actually. I should have taken a much more smaller piece. So with that, I want to carve into it a bit. Now, next time you go on holiday or go anywhere near a beach, have a close look at the shells and um, see what they're like. So this one, I'm going to get my lollipop stick and I'm going to make some grooves in it like this. quite much deeper than the other ones. And I'm going to put some water on and I'm just going to angle this up. So I'm going to angle my stick like that. So I can smooth those down, those ridges at the, on the edges. It is easier with a bit of water on the stick. I'm sort of carving it so that they're more round. So you can see the difference between that side and that side now. I'll just run my finger over to take off any edges. Pull that clay off there.
just a matter of taking your time. And enjoying the process. Often these sort of shells are white with a hint of pink, but sometimes they can be really like a, a lovely deep rich orange colour as well. So you can think about that when you're painting them. So um, this bit, I'm going to get my cocktail stick because I want... I'm going to just put it around my finger because I'm going to turn this over in a minute and I want to put some lines on here. And smooth it over with your finger. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to sit it in the palm of my hand and just gently put some water on it. I'm just smoothing it out now. I want it to be a little bit roundy. If you've got some bits like that, we can just Use the tool to tidy it up. So there's the back of my fan tailed shell, and there's the front. Oops. Now then, let's bring them in together. So this one, I can either sit it inside it, but I think it looks a lot prettier if it's just resting on the side like this. How about that? And you can see all the different possibilities of making some more shells. If you're not sure what they look like, just Google beach shells and they'll come up. And you can copy the shapes. There. And then leave those to dry on the windowsill, by a window, on your desk. In a couple of days' time, they'll have gone lighter in shade and will be hard. And that's the time to paint them. As I said, you could get some um, acrylic paints and you could get some varnish if you wanted to varnish them as well and go to town on those. Come up with some amazing colours. You can make them either look completely natural with whites and pastel colours or go over the top and do them tropical. <laughs> Although, actually, I don't think there's any bright coloured tropical shells. Well, there probably are. Now, that's a completely ridiculous thing to say. I'm sure there will be. Okay. And there you have it. Let me turn the camera around. So there we have our shell project. I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to um, wait for them to dry out and paint them up. Yeah, very pretty. You could even attach that actually if you wanted to. Anyway, I'll stop now. The possibilities are endless, that's what I'm saying. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's a nice and relaxing one, not too taxing. Um, I hope you've managed to get some kind of shell shapes made. If not, doesn't really matter. I hope you've just had some fun with uh, being creative and using your hands and letting go and not having to think too hard about anything in particular. 
So um, this is Dee saying goodbye and um, I hope you'll join me again for another wild card workshop and um, who knows what I'll be making next time. Okay, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, stay safe, stay well and above all, stay creative. Bye everyone. Mega Shell.